My father was a high-ranking lieutenant in the Vietnam War, fighting against the northern Vietnamese. Um, and when the south fell to the north, um, he pretty much had to escape. And if he got caught, he would have been thrown in a re-education camp, and, which is pretty much you know, hell, jail, and he would have been murdered or killed and tortured at the same time. So um, he had no choice but to take the family and, and flee Vietnam. Um, but during that time, um, a lot of people were doing this, and to, to be able to escape Vietnam, you had to have money to pay off um, the, the owners of the boat. So hundreds of people would pay these, the owners and cram into these boats and then escape. And what was happening was, um, when you leave your country, you would exchange all your Vietnamese money to gold bars and put them in your, around your waist, hoping that when you arrive to another country, you're, you're, you're sorted. And so the, um, the Thai uh, pirates kind of got onto this, and they would um, hijack all these boats and kill all the people and steal everybody's belongings and gold. And my father didn't want this to happen, so he, he, um, him and his army mate built their own boat, built their own little fake fishing boat, a little um, hidden compartment down at the bottom there, and all the kids and, and, and wives would, would hide down there and they would pretend to be fishermen. And so they did that and my mother was pregnant to me at the time, <clears throat> but they had no choice, they had to do it. Um, and we arrived to Malaysia and the Malaysia, Malaysian government were like, we've, we've taken too many Vietnamese boat people, we're really sorry, but keep going. And uh, so we kept going and arrived to Thailand. And as soon as we got to the shores of Thailand, I was pretty much born. Stayed in a refugee camp there for a year and then a bit more than a year actually, and then uh, got flown to Australia, uh, New South Wales, and, and stayed in another refugee camp here, um, a nice one in Villawood, and um, eventually got given a little government brick house in Western Sydney, where my parents still live today. And uh, that's our story.